All right, this is a brief lecture, actually, maybe not as brief as I would hope, on math review, because we need some math skills for this uh, course. This is just going to be a basic review of algebra and a couple of uh, particular algebraic concepts that will be important for this semester. It's not a complete review of algebra. There's just way too much out there. But you don't need everything out there for this course. So let's uh, move ahead a little bit here. Um, here we go. So we're going to be talking about basic processes. Uh, you need to know how to do addition and subtraction. Those are basically the same thing. Uh, each addition and subtraction, whether or not they use decimal places. Now, for some people, this is going to seem a little silly, but other people, it's been a long time since you had math on well, this tiny bit of review could help. You need to be able to do this kind of thing, just add and subtract individual numbers. You need to be able to multiply and divide. Now, you might see the symbol with an X for multiplication. You might also see an asterisk. I slip and do that sometimes because that's pretty much standard for computer multiplication and division. You need to know um, how to multiply and divide whole numbers, decimal numbers. Sometimes you'll just see a slash, a forward slash between two numbers, which means multiplication as well. I'm sorry, which means division as well. And that's a little more standard for computers as well. Uh, you need to understand what absolute value is, which of course is just whatever the sign of a particular uh, value is, you switch that sign to positive from wherever it was. So if it's negative, you make it positive, and if it's positive, you leave it alone. So the absolute value of the number 6 is positive 6, negative 2.5 is positive 2.5, but sometimes you'll see absolute value used as parentheses. So in this case, we have 5 minus 7. So you need to do 5 minus 7 first, and then do the absolute value after that. 5 minus 7 is negative 2, and the absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2, so the absolute value of this expression is 2. Positive and negative numbers can trip you up from time to time. Negative 25 plus 70, well, that's the same as 70 minus 25. Uh, is negative 3 greater than negative 2? This will throw you from time to time because the magnitude of negative 3 is greater than the magnitude of negative 2 because one's a 3 and one's a 2. However, greater than, less than means uh, left or right on the number line. So negative 3 is to the left of negative 2. Therefore, it is not greater than negative 2. It's less than negative 2. Now you can see my bad color matching here. 1 half minus 3 fourths. When you're adding and subtracting fractions, it's actually quite a bit more frustrating than simply multiplying them because the fractions have to be conformable. You have, they have to have the same denominator before you can do anything with them. So if you want to take 1 half minus 3 fourths, you have to give those fractions the same denominator. So 1 half can be expressed as 2 fourths. So you could multiply both the top and the bottom of 1 half by 2, and you'd end up with 2 fourths. So 1 half is the same as 2 fourths. So 2 fourths minus 3 fourths is minus 1 fourth, because 2 minus 3 is minus 1, which would be expressed as negative 0.25. Now in this class, I strongly prefer you to just use standard um, decimal notation for everything. So negative 0.25, I would much prefer to see that instead of negative 1 fourth on homeworks and tests and things like that. You won't necessarily get it wrong, but you might make me, you know, take to drinking or something like that. So we've got... Uh, a, dot, or sorry, a fraction plus a whole number, just remember that making those two things have the same denominator is pretty easy. 3 is the same as 3 over 1, so if we just multiply both the 3 in the numerator and the 1 in the denominator times 7, 21 sevenths is the same as 3. So you can say 9 over 7 plus 3 is the same as 9 over 7 plus 21 over 7. So in which case it's just 9 sevenths plus 21 sevenths, which is 30 sevenths which could be expressed if you wanted to as 4 and 2 sevenths, or you could just punch 30 divided by 7 into your calculator, which is what I would do, and you would get about 4.29. You might often see this business where parentheses are used as multiplication, and you have a whole number plus a fraction times a fraction. This is just going through some possibilities. Well, 3 and 1 fifth is the same as 15 fifths and 1 fifth. So 3 is 15 fifths. So 15 fifths plus 1 fifth, and all of that times 5, 5 over 6, 5 6. Now for multiplication, you don't have to worry about getting the same numerator and denominator. You just multiply straight across. 16 times 5 is 80. 5 times 6 is 30. So 80 over 30, 8 over 3. You could reduce that to 2 and 2 thirds, but 
I prefer you just punch 80 over 30 into your calculator and come up with 2.67. Well, it would be 2.666, but you'd round to 2.67 probably. Sometimes you'll see a fraction divided by another fraction, either because it's over a line or there's a division symbol. So 3 sevenths divided by 5 twelfths. Both, both the left expression and the right expression are exactly the same math. And when that happens, you can reverse the second one and multiply. So 3 sevenths divided by 5 twelfths is the same as 3 sevenths times 12 fifths. And then you just multiply straight across. 3 times 12, 7 times 5. 36 over 35, I wouldn't bother with the 1 and 1 35th because since I just punch it in the calculator, 1.03. So order of operations is actually quite a lot more important than anything that we've been talking about in the way of, of um, actual numbers. So in this case, I'm going to suggest that you use the please excuse my dear Aunt Sally mnemonic if you don't have another one. There are several. I like Aunt Sally because I imagine a crazy aunt who uh, has a serious drinking problem or something like that. And she belches in front of the guests. Anyway, the way this works is it, the, the P reminds you to do everything in parentheses first. And the E is everything in exponents. The M and the D go together. It doesn't mean do multiplication first and division second. That's a problem with this mnemonic. It doesn't make that clear. It just means after you've done anything in parentheses and anything with exponents, then you do all the multiplication and division in whatever order it shows up from left to right. So if, if a division operation shows up first, you do that first. And then A and S, addition and subtraction, is the same way. Addition and subtraction should not be seen as addition first and subtraction second, but rather they happen, at, they happen as one step, and you just take things from left to right. All addition and subtraction, left to right. So... We have to talk about some kind of asterisks here. One is that several things act as parentheses in addition to actual parentheses. So let's look at this expression here. There's a lot of stuff going on in here. See if you can parse it out. Pause this video as often as you need so you can work things out yourself, but I'm just going to move through it. First, are there any parentheses? There actually are not any technical parentheses, but there are some virtual parentheses there. The parentheses that are here are not the kind of parentheses that order of operation refers to. They're just a shorthand way of saying multiplication. But there are some parentheses, sort of, in that the 2 times 18 has to be done before you can take the square root of that. 6 plus 7 squared has to be done before you can do the division, and 3 minus 11 has to be done before you can do that division. So it's as if there are parentheses here and here and here. So we'll need to do that before anything else. So, because there are no actual series parentheses, we can do exponents here first. So let's do exponents. This exponent is, has to be worked out before you can do any addition, before you can add the 7 to 6, you have to square it first. And you have to take the square root of 2 times 18 here. Both of those things have to be done. 2 times 18 is 36, square root of that is 6. So here you have 7 squared is 49. And so you simplify it just as if it were for parentheses under the radicals. So a radical acts as parentheses. Now we have a multiplication that we can do. We only have, uh, we have one multiplication operation and then a division operation, but we can't do that division until we simplify the top and the bottom. So strangely, we have to, it seems like we have to do addition and subtraction before division, but that's not it. It's that there are parentheses here. Whenever an entire thing with pluses and minuses is in the numerator or the denominator of a fraction, there might as well just be parentheses around that. You have to take care of those parentheses first, but we had to do the squaring inside the parentheses before we could do the adding inside the parentheses. Yeah, you've probably done this before. So simplify all that stuff. Working on through, then you do the addition and the subtraction, and you should end up with 18.44 if I did this math right. So here we have 3x plus 19 equals 26 plus 7x. Let's solve this equation. Subtracting 19 from both sides will isolate that 3x on one side. 3x plus 0 is the same as just writing 3x. And now we can isolate all the x's on one side and all the, all the uh, numbers not attached to a variable on the other sides by subtracting all the variable stuff on the right side, in other words, 7x. 
subtract that from both sides. Remember, anything you can do to both sides of an equation is probably okay. There are limits, but generally it's a good rule. So now we end up with negative 4x equals 7. Divide that by negative 4. Now the negative 4 over the negative 4, I have this intermediate step. You could reduce it to negative 1 over negative 1. Or you could remember that anything over itself is just positive 1. So anyway, that's going to be a positive 1 times 7 over negative 4. Now something over divided by a negative number or positive by a negative ends up being negative. So this is x equals negative 7 fourths. The end. We're done. Except I prefer you just turn that into negative 1.75. So inequalities will come up later in the semester, maybe one time. It's not going to be a huge focus, but it might be handy to notice as we get there. We sometimes need to talk about a value that represents a range of numbers between two other numbers. So in this case, x represents all the numbers between 5 and 27. So greater than 5, less than 27, but because we have regular less than signs here, not less than or equal to signs, then uh, x represents everything not including the 5 or the 27. So I, I made my little brackets here go inside the 5 and 27. I know there's a standardized way to do this with the dots and circles and stuff, but I didn't do that because the graphics were a little super annoying in PowerPoint. So I'm using a little bracket system here. So here's another one where the variable is on the outside of the range, not the inside of the range. So y is less than 12, and 12 is less than y. So y is all the numbers that are not 12, essentially. Less than 12, not including 12, greater than 12. So it's everything that's not 12. Now, if you're working with integers, then y is all the integers, like everything from 13 up and 11 down. But if you're working with continuous numbers, so real numbers, then it's everything from 12.00000 infinity 1 and on up, and everything from 11.99999 and infinity on up there. Uh, and lower. In another case, 12 is a vanishingly small point. So it depends on which one you're working with in that particular case. Now here we have x is between negative 2 and positive 2, but it includes negative 2 and positive 2 because you have the less than or equal to signs. So in this case, we could draw the graph like this, and I would put the brackets around the negative 2 and positive 2 because we've got um, it includes both of those things here. Now, dividing in formulas is an issue because I need you to understand what happens when there's something in the numerator of a formula. <coughs> Sorry about that nasty cough there. Imagine a variable x, and then that variable is just a single value. And that value is anything that's a positive number that's not less than 1. So it's greater than 1. I should have said equal to, but greater than 1. What happens to x if you divide it by another number? that's a positive value. So x over 5, what happens to that whole expression? I mean, is the result smaller than x or larger? Well, I think it's fairly obvious that it's smaller. It'll be one-fifth the size of x. But what if we divide it by a number that is less than 1? Well, then the result will be larger. Because when you divide something by a fraction, something less than 1, then the result is larger than the original number. In this case, it'll be twice the size of x. Now, which of the following will produce the smaller value? These are two formulas we're going to encounter in a couple of weeks here for uh, standard deviation. You don't need to understand what the sigma means yet or what the bar over the x means. All you need to understand is that there is a single difference between these formulas. Here it says n, and here it says n minus 1. Process that for a second. The only difference is n and n minus 1. And so n minus 1 is smaller. If something has a larger value in the denominator, then that means the overall number is smaller. If something has a smaller number in the denominator, then what it reduces to, the overall value, is larger. So this represents a smaller number than this does. a is smaller than b. Because let's say this is 5, then this has to be 4. This is 100, this has to be 99. That's about as far as I need to go with talking about uh, mathematics. Anything else we can pick up as we go along? But there really won't be much to pick up.